Hmm. Ooh, she's making thinking sounds. What could be on her mind, I wonder? Just going over the promised Neverland in my head. What about it? Trying to come up with something we could do an episode on? Uh, I think I might have something. Oh, great! Then shall we get started? Sure thing! Hi, hi, everyone! Hey, guys! Looks like you're in for a treat! She's Rila! She's Riley! And, and this, this is, is a Bullet Toon Weekend! weekend. To start, a bit of background. The first time I'd heard of TPN, I was browsing the manga section in our local comic book store and one of the guys recommended it. But he was super vague about it, so I just decided to check it out some other time after doing my own research. After looking into it, I wasn't really all that interested. Then, this past winter season, the anime came out, so I decided to check it out and man was I not expecting to like it as much as I did! Yeah, I mean, it's basically Killing Kids the anime. It's a hard sell, but it's really engaging. Though I still wouldn't go as far as to call it horror. It's more of a psychological thriller. And later, it even kind of sheds that aspect and becomes more of a standard survival shonen. True, but let me ask you something. What's The Promised Neverland actually about? Huh? Well, I guess if I had to say, then... I read it as a story about second chances and finding the hope to struggle and survive through intense hardship for one's family. Pretty standard shonen stuff, you know. For sure, I'm inclined to agree, but I think one thing it definitely isn't is a tale championing the benefits of a proper education system. No kidding. I, I mean, yeah, it seems obvious when I word it like that, but think about it. The Promised Neverland is seriously a perfect metaphor for the education system. And probably entirely by accident, but still. Now that you mention it, I can totally see that. There's actually a lot of stuff to support that idea. Even going into the manga past where the anime left off. Definitely. Which reminds me, anime-only people, we're gonna be talking about some stuff for the manga, so this is your spoiler warning. First of all, think back to the first arc of the manga. How much do we actually see Isabella teaching the kids anything? Come to think of it, pretty much never. Not on purpose, anyway. The most we see her kinda teach is how to play strategy games and stuff. We don't even get to see the kids studying at all. Right? Pretty much all the time we ever even see the kids, it's during playtime, breakfast, or bedtime. They obviously have a classroom, but at no point is Isabella shown lecturing them at all. Everything we do see her teach is purely recreational, things like chess. And it's a pure coincidence that those lessons wound up being her downfall. Well, kinda. That and shoddy writing. Harsh, but not necessarily untrue. It's probably just something they did to save time. Seeing her teach and stuff isn't really that important, from a storytelling standpoint. But it is pretty weird. Though, if we wanted to add fuel to the fire, there are very real reasons a lot of teachers are unsatisfied with their jobs. It's a tough job, and teachers are, by far, some of the most underpaid and under-accommodated professionals in the world. For many, they see a job that has little stability and no real future. Tell me something. Who does that sound like? Isabel. Oh. Oh, I get it. Yeah. The most we really get on their education is the tests. Speaking of which, did you notice the same thing that I did about those? You mean how every question they actually featured was virtually useless in everyday life? Yes. Yes, I did. Like being able to tell what geometric shape a bunch of flat ones would fold into. Why the hell would anyone need to know that? It's pretty similar, though, to the overall problem with the actual education system. One of the problems, anyway. A lot of the knowledge you get out of public education is... pretty much pointless. And that's completely setting aside how apparent it's becoming that standardized tests aren't a good way to gauge a person's intelligence. On top of being inaccurate, there are some brilliant people who are terrible test takers. Exhibit A, that one, right over there. Your ability to both praise and insult me at the same time is seriously an art form. But I'm not wrong. There are different kinds of intelligence. Standardized tests really only target those of a specific type. And even that's ignoring the need for the information in the test to be, you know, useful. Frankly, I can guarantee that most people will never, ever need to know the periodic table. Or damn near any math past algebra. You want to know what classes schools should probably be emphasizing more? Things that are actually important to function in everyday society. Like, for example, maybe a class on how to do taxes or treat minor injuries. Even just a basic home economics class. None of those were required learning for us. And they really should have been. 
And even that's leaving out stuff like government, law, and economics, which is sometimes required learning. But standardized tests pretty much only target math and reading, occasionally throwing in some science and history. At least when we were going. Now, if we think back, we can't exactly be sure how much of what the kids learned from their classes and how much they just read in the library. But I can't imagine Isabella taught them herself anything they could have used to escape. Not intentionally. Making ropes out of bedsheets and tablecloths, for example. That is one hella specific skill that I can't imagine her teaching them, especially as someone who'd already tried to escape when she was a kid. So it's highly unlikely that stuff would have been on the tests. Everything we saw in them was basically just arithmetic. Which brings us to another point. And this is where those manga spoilers are gonna start coming in big time. But where did the kids learn basically everything that was actually useful to them? Oh, basically all of it was stuff they picked up outside of their actual education. Starting with the very first thing, actually. Yep. Discovering the secret was the first thing. Something that helped them survive. And since it was, you know, a secret, it kind of goes without saying that the system had no intention of telling them about it. I'm not jaded enough to think that the actual education system is trying to completely hide the harshness of the world from us, though I definitely wouldn't say it's really all that interested in fully preparing us for it either. They also knew Morse code, which it's implied that they taught themselves. After all, Emma got perfect scores on her tests. But late into the manga, it's pointed out that she had to learn that one on her own, while Ray, and for some reason Phil, already knew it. If not for that, they wouldn't have been able to find the messages that Mr. Minerva left them. And speaking of Minerva, his books were survival guides for the outside world, cleverly disguised as adventure novels so the system wouldn't catch wind of what he was doing. Another example of outside help. And it keeps going from there. Emma also picked up how to hunt from a demon named Sanju not long after they escaped in the manga. And Yugo, even later in the manga, taught them how to rough it in order to survive in the wild, especially among wild demons. It's a lot like how things work in the real world, frankly. All the most useful things we're either expected to figure out for ourselves, or learn from people with experience in that regard outside of school. Though it's not a one-to-one -one comparison, obviously. The rough world outside that the kids deal with is entirely different from the one we put up with on a regular basis. Substitute the wilderness and the demon threat for the struggles of modern society, and it all applies in the same way. The hunting and survival skills are their equivalent of paying bills. The point is that it's by using all of this outside knowledge that they're able to reclaim their lives for themselves. Hardly any of it comes from what they learned in school. But the most telling point of all is one I already alluded to. Upon their graduation from this system, they're basically thrown into a cold, brutal world that, in their case, is literally ready to devour them at any given moment. And if that's not a perfect summary of life on your own, I don't know what is. To be fair, there's a lot more to be said about the actual system. Stuff we won't really get into here because, well, it'd get a bit heavy. But the kids wind up relying more or less entirely on themselves after a certain point. They struggle, they get knocked down, they pick themselves up and struggle some more. That's just the hand they've been dealt. The education system didn't prepare them for what was beyond those walls. Not even a little. And that's the reality they find themselves constantly fighting against while pursuing their dream of a happy, stable life with their family. Obviously, the education system in the Promised Neverland is a very literal sham. A far more apparent one than the system we have in real life. But that's the point. The parallel between the two is likely just an entirely unintentional coincidence. But on the off chance that it isn't, it'd actually be pretty genius. A lot of it adds up pretty well. Not genius enough to save it from Mob Psycho 100, though. Shut up! I'm telling you, it was rigged! Rigged! Sure. But yeah, I'd be pretty impressed if all this was on purpose, applying the typical shonen formula to the concept of education failing us and leaving us unprepared for society. The Promised Neverland is a lot of things. A brutal tale of survival, the touching story of a loving family, a twisted pita wet dream. And, above all else, an unintentional metaphor for the education system. What do you guys think of it? Let us know in the comments! Give that like button a zap and don't forget to subscribe! Also, give that bell a ring so you're notified whenever we upload a new video. I'm Rila, signing off! I'm Riley, bowing out! Thanks so much for watching! Keep up the awesome! And stay, stay tuned! tuned.